Alright, it's time for more crazy experiments in Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, today I thought I'd try to make a stereo amplifier, well, stereo tube amplifier, for this record player. Yes, I've put the old BSR turntable back together. Put a new cartridge in there, or rather it's the cartridge out of the ION USB turntable. But it works good enough. Anyway, I did try to make an amplifier from these two valves right here. And although it works, unfortunately as I don't, as I don't have two identical tubes, I just had to use um, those two there and hope for the best and just as I predicted, I get more amplification out of one channel than I do at the other, simply because these two are different to each other. So I'm using this tube right here. Uh, let's see if I can just turn this over without burning myself on it. I don't know if you can make that out. That's an ECC something 3. I've, I've forgotten it already. The thing is, the letters on it are kind of smeared and it's difficult to read. Now some of you are going to hate me for this. That is one of the tubes out of the Petto Scott. But I promise if I ever find another one of these I will pop that back in there and uh, yeah. See I haven't even soldered the wires on there. I'm just using bits of PVC sleeving off another wire to hold the wires on the pins. And this is the circuit that I've come up with to the, all the information I could find on the data sheet. Now, at the moment I only have this resistor and this resistor hooked up. So, don't have this capacitor in, don't have this capacitor in, which I forgot to mark the value on, don't have this resistor or this resistor. Another problem is my meter has died on me. Well, sort of anyway. Turn it on, nothing ha I mean nothing happens. However, I do have a solution for this. Um, I can just open this up, up at the back here. I poke around with the wires on the switch, which is right there. I hope I'm holding it into the camera. Just muck about down there. Okay, it should be on now. No, it's still not on. This usually works much better if I get a bit of tin foil and do so. Or I'll just poke it with the end of a screwdriver. Let's see if that works. Both are effective methods. Oh yes, it's come on. I don't know why that works, but it does. Right, so I'm leaving that on. I need to. Re I know what the problem is. It's the switch. It's not working very good. Anyway, this is the circuit so far. There is the valve, which I'm going to be testing. I've got one side hooked up. Here is the transformer. And we've got a bridge rectifier here, smoothing capacitor here. This transformer at the back is being used as a choke. Another smoothing capacitor, so we have a nice pie filter. And that's connected to this valve. And down here, I'm not going to touch it just in case there's some charge left in those capacitors two resistors. There is the 470k and there is the 820 ohm. Okay, so I'm going to power this on and test the voltages. Now I've already checked that those capacitors are good enough for the voltage that this transformer is going to give out. Put this onto the 1000 volt setting. Across this main filter capacitor 377 volts. So, mustn't short anything out or it'll make a bit of a bang. And this one, 378 volts. It's a bit weird. We'll get more out of that one than we are out of that one. Oh, never mind, it's gone up a little bit. Now I'm going to test the voltage at the anode, and it should be exactly the same because I haven't turned the filament on yet. So there shouldn't be anything going through that tube. That's about right. Shouldn't have anything on the cathode. And indeed we don't. So I'm going to 
going to turn the filament on now. Just give it about half a minute to warm up and I'll be back. Right, it's about half a minute later and I'm going to test the voltages again. Let's see what we have on the anode this time. I'll try doing this without shocking myself. 242 volts, that's quite understandable. On the cathode we have about 2 volts. Let's just get a little bit more resolution in there. Okay, we've got 2.35 volts on the cathode. And on the control grid, if I can just get my meter in there, this valve is getting pretty warm. We got about minus two and a half volts. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this valve up to this, up to one of the channels on the cartridge here and connect the output to an amplifier and we'll see what we get. Well, what do you know, it's working. Got this tube hooked up to this cartridge connected to this amplifier better not play too much of the record anyway even though it is a cover of another song you never know and yeah I tested this through headphones as well I connected headphones up to the output of the valve and I could definitely tell it was working it wasn't obscenely loud, but it was definitely loud enough that you wouldn't want to listen to it for too long. So anyway, going over to the circuit here, decided to use a 0.1 microfarad capacitor there. I haven't put a capacitor in there, although I suppose I should, but I'm not going to. And I'm not using this one mega ohm resistor here. Just using the um, bias the tube itself provides for itself. Well, you know what I mean. And it seems to work really well, so all I've got to do now is build up the circuitry for the other channel, and... We should be in business. Well, here we are again. Back. And we have stereo. Yep, we have stereo and we also have hum. Quite a bit of hum. See, I decided, well, might as well power the valve's filament off the transformer as well because it can be AC powered as well as DC powered. It says so in the data sheet, and in fact, this valve has always been AC powered. Well, the filament of the valve has. But my circuits, yeah, as you can hear. Strange thing is, if I touch on the filament wires, the hum goes a little bit. Well, there we go. It's working, and there's no hum. So let's just take a closer look at what I did. So I had a scrounge round in one of my boxes and found a switch mode power supply I'm not using, you know, one of those wall wart things. 10 volts. So what I did was connected that to the valve's filament through this resistor here. It's just a 10 ohm resistor. I'm not going to touch it in case it's burning hot, but... Anyway, that drops the voltage down to about 7 volts, but I don't think that's going to hurt it. Now that's working good. No hum. And good, high quality stereo sound. Some of you are probably wondering how I'm getting stereo sound from just one valve. Okay, well, I'm going to take the track camera off the tripod and just try to show you how. Okay, I'm just trying to get a good angle so you can see it better. If I turn the light on... I can't really see it, but there's two chambers inside that valve. So two chambers that are, you know, the same. So I can get stereo from just one valve. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is play a record and have it recording on this tape deck here. And I'll play that into the computer so you can hear how good this actually sounds.
clouds he saw Plowing through the ragged skies And up a cloudy draw Their brands were still on fire And their hooves were made of steel Their horns were black and shiny And their hot breath he could feel A bolt of fear went through him As they thundered through the sky For Sweet a- surrender on the good side You remember we used to run Shadow of the cargoes I take you one time We're counting all the numbers Down to the waterline When Mia misses on the dog leaves stairway City man, grab my golden hair I'll teach you and you'll never be sure The way that you need is too much like greed Decide if you are rich or you're poor So anyway, that gives you an idea of how good it sounds. So I'll just go through the entire setup. Some of you may be wondering why there's this wire here. Well, that's just some extra grounding that goes along there. It's connected to this piece of wire here, and that is finally connected to the ground of one, of the shield of one of the, uh, or ground of one of these wires here. These wires here, where it comes out of the, of the pick up goes along here and into each grid of the tube or valve or whatever you want to call it I have to keep swapping back between valve and tube so people know what I'm talking about anyway there's the resistor that's connecting this wall wart here to the um, filament I can't remember what the name of it was then of course we've got these two smoothing capacitors for the high voltage little rectifier and of course the transformer anyway the output of the tube goes into these two wires here this white wire and this green wire As I follow it along excuse the mess of this place goes into these two capacitors and these two one mega ohm resistors Not this cable and into the line in. And that's basically how it's set up. Now what I intend to do sometime later on, although that's gonna be for another video, make a box for this and put all of this stuff inside the box, put the record player on top of it, and have a nice good sounding auto changer record player. So anyway, that's just about it for this video, so I'm going to leave you with the circuit so you can see how it's all done. And, well, I guess that's it. So, until next time, goodbye.